like my my official PR on it is I don't believe Magnus uh, cheated on his stream rounds. Okay. Um, you know, I mean that's <laughs> well. That's did you, just, did you read fair, the post where they, they talked brought about... they brought in a magician and, and the right, ma magician <laughs> confirmed <laughs> the magician. that he just got lucky. He, he did lucky. not stack. He He's did not like, stack yeah. his deck per the magi the magician. Well, I. So just to be clear, I don't know anything about the magician part. What up, guys? Welcome to Faded Town, the number one Pokemon podcast in the world. Those are facts. You can check them, look them up in a book, whatever. They're there, I promise. Um, uh, if you've just first time watching this, we're less discussion on meta. We're more discussion on the players themselves. We want people to get to know our community better. Um, but today we have one hell of a guest. Once one, a re regional, completely blindfolded. <laughs> he he uh, is the choice band kid. Uh, and I don't know. the runner up of 2000, I see Emery Taylor. What up, man? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, uh, to this show. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Oh, what's up, bad? How's your day going, dude? It's going pretty well. I uh, I sold some a mat today, and uh, and yeah, that's so, about it. Was like what a, mat? What mat was, was it? Oops, in quarter four with Peeker, um, and uh, I sold one of my my guard of war Sylveon mats. So okay, all right. Hey, I'm an entrepreneur, you know. <laughs> all right, but you keep you're keeping that that. That run, or what is it top eight Matt or is, does it say yeah yeah well at least right now I might I might sell it in a bit I just uh yeah those are too fresh you know those are going uh um, I've seen them they're going for a hefty price out I mean, there you don't you don't need <laughs> the mat them out there, if so. you don't need the mat might as well make some money off of it mm -hmm. right. respect so like how how does this whole Pokemon drift for you like did, did you how'd you get into game how old are you Sure. So I am 17 years old. Uh, I live in Minnesota, um, mm -hmm. in the Twin Cities area. If anyone knows where that is. Um, so I started playing Pokemon twice, if you will. So like I started playing 12 years ago, uh, just like as a kid going to league. Um, I had a friend who was really competitive and introduced me to to a store that I played at for about six years. Um, and then my sort of second uh, second beginning um was when i started going to tournaments six years ago as a senior um i my first year was you know the first year i was eligible to be a senior i played all four years in seniors and this will be the end of my second year in masters okay oh all right, all right. i think everyone does that everyone quits for a little bit and then they're <laughs> like i can't really quit right. can't i didn't really. i didn't quit i was like, a, so like i just didn't know tournaments existed <laughs> yeah that makes sense i guess I played league for six years oh, geez. so basically you've been playing like your entire life which is yeah. Yeah. dope well, i know a lot of people do that what's it or yeah you know, you're pretty young i was gonna be like what's your pop id but like you're young it's still, well, i had to get a new one when i started oh, playing tournaments so true. <laughs> Still so six, after, years, after, six years old, like the, or I mean, not six years old, but six years of being in, uh, you know, regionals. That's a pretty, pretty old pop ID. Should, yeah, about you know? six digits right now. Yeah, it's the same. <laughs> but, know, mine's like fucking eight, <laughs> some shit like that. <laughs> I think uh, they're up to like nine or ten. Really? Now. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Someone showed me their pop ID was like three. I was like, that's Josh. What do you? Josh. No, Josh is four. Josh is four. four. Oh my god. But yeah. Yeah, someone at Collector's Cash was like, I have, like, two digits. I'm like, all right. <laughs> just f flex. <laughs> That's flex, dude. Started playing the game when it first yeah, came out. Yeah, but how much you Oh, my gosh. All right. So you're you're still uh, in high school? I'm a rising senior this year. I'll graduate next year and then uh, go on to college. Nice. There. Where are you going to college at? All right. Uh, that's a big question that I don't okay, have to that's answer. Okay. That's okay. That is allowed. That is allowed. Do not. You don't. He's got, he's yeah, got yeah, here. You got plenty of time. Uh, you don't have to go to college. Just throwing that out there. You know, oh yeah. This is true. You don't have to go to college. But uh, when, how many regionals did you attend this year? So I attended five regionals. Um, I went to Madison, Denver, Collinsville. Uh, Memphis and Dallas. Okay, okay. those yeah. are all pretty close. And 
I, yeah. That makes all, sense. All in the Midwest area, more yeah, or less, besides yeah. like uh, Dallas and. Lucky. Fairly, fairly, yeah, everything's fairly. Live, you kind of live right in the bubble. Everything's fairly yeah, close yeah. to you. We live. We live in Las Vegas, no. where we get absolutely nothing. We get. We get one. Yeah. One league cup, maybe two. Oh yeah, we don't uh, get league cups. Quarter. That's not league. So we gotta go to Arizona to play. Yeah. League. <laughs> or yeah. Cali. And Cali's a fucking monster oh, dude, place you're to play league cups. Their, many, their league cups are like hundred regionals men. for their league cup. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's what it is, yeah. man. The grind on the the grind on the West right. Coast is real. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's not. It, it it is what it is. I don't know. Yeah. But you you're caught in a great spot, and being able to even even though you're young, like you still being able to travel all those regionals is is lucky. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I'm, I'm so <laughs> lucky. Have, have the opportunities I have and uh, Minnesota is also a really great place to play local Pokemon um, it's not a great place to play like like national Pokemon um, what I mean by that is just that we have like so before like the whole League Cup crisis in quarter one we had like five or six cups a quarter and then we have cups in Iowa and then and cups in Wisconsin and cups in Fargo that you can all drive to if you're like insane That's right, yeah. um, and then we also have um we also don't have like very many regionals close to us at all. So like Madison is four hours, but then the next closest is like Collinsville, which is nine hours. And Memphis is like 12. Denver is like 12 if you want to drive. So um, we have like a lot of like 13 hour regionals if you want to go to those. But uh, <laughs> that's actually our biggest issue is like we have a lot of really, really good players who just can't get their invite because they can't like travel as much cool. yeah how, like how's the flights out of minnesota because like out of uh, vegas they're, they're cheap usually not super cheap uh but they're not like mind-bogglingly expensive so we have like a lot of seniors who fly out with their parents and stuff like that um i think we even have we have a junior in top 16 we have i believe a senior in top 16 um, like almost every senior in our area got their invite. Damn, um, that's good. But uh, like uh-huh. you know, I, yeah. I just you know our masters. <laughs> can't, can't it, it, it is what it is. Yeah. There's not that many young I mean, masters. Either, so right, because like uh, obviously, like you've been playing this for a long time, so your parents are pretty on board with you, right? Yeah, yeah. You I have mean, lots it's, of parts. It's been a process for sure. Um, this year, I think I went to more regionals than I've ever gone to, just because of the whole 550 right. number. Yeah. Um, but if I had known, I would have been able to get my whole invite yeah. before. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have gone to five. So. Hey. <laughs> Sometimes it works hey, out, man. I mean, you made you made the like run, how, uh, and it's yeah. uh, it is what it is. That's right. the thing yeah. to bet right. on yeah, that, definitely, sure. definitely not, right, Zach? <laughs> hey. Hey, Blissey well, just didn't Blissey, work out. Right? Blissey yeah. fell short. When you flip it, when you flip it coins, uh, you can't get too mad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> get man. too mad. But like, uh, before going to NAIC, did you have your invite? Already? I did. So okay. I had 578 points going into the event, and then I had 182 in quarter four, and okay. then I got second. So I got 582 points in the last quarter. Killed it. Thank Disgusting. You. So where does, yeah. that put, where does that put <laughs> you in standings for like, uh, like overall? Uh, top, top sixteen. 16? He's like, so he's just out of I it. Finished, aren't you? I'm just outside, so I finished twentieth on the season in okay. terms of points. But um, I've been informed by others who are more in tune with stuff like this that if they do give stipends off quarter four, I believe I'd be locked for a top four invite oh, uh, in terms of stipends to the next that's IC. Tough. So. They could change the system again, like they've changed it the last three years. But um, if they did it based on quarter four, I would be yeah, well off. Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd be. Yeah, I mean, you did kill. Yeah, you have to be easily. I mean, five hundred something points in one quarter. You should get like, that easy. Yeah. Hopefully, they do that for your. Hopefully, your hopefully. Yeah. They give. They give you. Like, mean, in my head, in my head, I'm like, hopefully not. Then I can hit yeah. up like two league cups and then maybe get it. You know. Yeah. Right. Win the open and be like, oh, got, got you. <laughs> But who knows? Yeah, you'll be fine. You'll get that two <coughs> yeah. grand. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. five. Grand, oh, it's five actually. grand. Five grand for stipends? No, no, yeah. no. Yeah. For the stipend. <laughs> Isn't it two grand for the? Oh, for the stipend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. For the stipend. I thought you meant from from. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You got five. No, no, no. Yeah, we know, we know. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got five G's. That's that's <laughs> dope. That's yeah, dope. Right. So, uh, well, I mean, 
Let's uh, let's kind of get get to know a little bit more about you. So you started Pokemon when you were really young. What what fuels you to keep playing and and trying to play at a uh, at a professional level? Yeah, that's Are a great we... question. So I've actually struggled. A lot of my personal like Facebook friends know that I've struggled a lot with like motivation to keep playing this year, motivation to to grind. You know, um, especially after like I didn't get points in Collinsville or in Denver. Uh, both of which were probably my fault. I didn't really test enough for the event, um, either of the events, and like I didn't play the best deck, even though I like cards for the best deck. So like it was definitely um, my fault that I didn't get points. But after those two regionals, I was in like a lot worse state for my invite and all. So that was really like demoralizing. Um, I guess in terms of just staying motivated, for me, it's like I feel like I have so much invested in the game. Like obviously I'm not I'm not a top player, but like I um, second place second place at NAIC. Uh, I think that cements you into a uh, top player category, but so I think <laughs> well, you're, you're, good, you're there. Least. And I feel like I've put a lot of hours into the game and a lot of hours into making friends, a lot of hours into into working on my sequencing. Um, and so like I that level of investment is what keeps me in the game you know because i've just worked so hard to be where i am now um and like i was texting one of my friends and i was talking about how um you know like i really love talking about pokemon <laughs> and i was like maybe i'd want to be a commentator someday but then i like stopped myself and i was like i still got stuff to right. accomplish right. cancel it on now I'm, I'm on a really really wild way was, so. this, was this before or after your uh, your top two finish after, after, after. Oh, okay, okay. So <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm, I'm on the wave. It up. I got tattoo, hanging wave. it up. Going yeah. straight into commentary. <laughs> Have a good enough there. Yeah, right. <laughs> you're young, man. You, you hit that. You hit that commentary when you retired. It's yeah, right. Rough. Right. <laughs> and like, let's be honest. We need some better commentators. <clears throat> Sign me up. Right. Yeah, we only like we only uh, like watching our boy Kirk. I didn't. Oh, yeah. I Love I him. did not say that. You said that. <laughs> that was not a quote. <laughs> Kurt Stone, yeah. but there's some there's some commentators that are fine, but yeah. So yeah. when we when we look, so like basically NAIC was your big coming out, right? Yeah, yeah. Going into day one, like why why Picaram? Um, that's a really another really good question. So to give you a sense of of what I mean by the wave, I I, I don't just mean NAIC. So I I won my last four cups of the season. Um, like I won four consecutive and obviously we don't have huge attendance, but to me, it's still like an accomplishment. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. Um, and then I, I day two Madison, uh, and got top 32 there. D2. So going into the event, I day two Madison with rushes Yard greens. Um, and then I, uh, what did I do? <laughs> and then I went to cups of speaker up. So I was like, there's sort of these two decks that I've been messing around with. I like both of them a lot. I went to the event, drove to the event, assuming I was going to play Rush Ram Greens. And then I was talking with some friends and talking about the deck's matchups. And like, I realized that I just really didn't want to play the deck again. I didn't want to play a deck that lost to Let Loose. Um, like the deck is just, it's fun to play for me. Like it's more fun to play than the Kiawe version, but it's still like, it's still a little brain dead. Um, like it's not obviously like the deck is hard to pilot and everything, but but yeah. I just don't enjoy playing it as the, much as, the I, Kiawe, as I thought the I would. Kiawe version or the uh, Greens version? No, the Greens oh, version. Okay, okay. So I went going planning on playing a Greens version similar to what I played in Madison, but then yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't like the deck that much. Um, I had a different Picaron version built with like Jirachi and stuff, uh, not too similar to what the other guys were playing, like Gustavo and and Diego. But um, I just decided like you know I don't like this version of the deck. Um, so, um, and my friend Aaron, uh, who, who helps out with the Wonder Tag podcast was staying with us and we were like, let's build this deck. Let's play the same 60. Like I have my invite already and she wasn't really going for it. So like, let's just have fun. And, uh, we sort of threw the deck together, putting a few cute texts like Raikou and Wobbuffet and then just sort of, I texted send it <laughs> full sand, full and, uh, sand. Yeah, feel, like so. it's always it's always more fun when you're playing the same 60 as other yeah. people like you've worked together you're like man i think this is good let's try this and yeah, yeah. it fucking worked out for you <laughs> so like when you go into day one what'd you end day one at 801 Ooh. undefeated undefeated, right. undefeated. Uh, turns yeah. out how did turns that out, Picaron was a good choice 
Yeah. Well, like, because I was at the tournament, I just felt like no, no top players or like relevant players were playing Charizard, right? Like, like in my, my head, um, everyone was like shying away from it. I think Jose might have. No, Jose played fucking Zero Valley. Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay. Well, then, yeah. That sounds about like, right. So Jose was like the only. I thought for sure Jose was gonna play it. And then yeah. I, I walk over. No, there I and, mean, I'm playing Zora Valley. I didn't really see any at the top tables day two. Um, I played against one to. I I think I played against one to guarantee. Day two, so I think I played against one at five oh one or six oh one maybe. Um, you can check my Hey Fonte post for when I played against Ereshazad Greens. I played against Ereshazad Kiawe like round five or something around. Yeah, around yeah, around five, and literally like game one, he goes let loose. I brick. We go to game two, he goes like growl of pass. Game three, he goes growl of pass. <laughs> oh, like it was like it was like damn. the most. Like, but that's like damn. a bad. Like yeah, on paper, was, that's a bad matchup for you, right? Uh yeah, it's like forty five, fifty five, or forty sixty. <laughs> I feel pretty. Honestly, I don't think it's like as bad a matchup as people make it out to be, but um, but it's definitely not like super easy <laughs> right, right like because uh all the players were playing pikaron like even right. dg played pikaron like in my head i'm like oh, isn't that they're, they have to know the charge match charizard matchup better than other people that they're just confident in beating the charizard yeah. but you also just make a meta call i'm like i right. don't think anyone is playing charizard everyone was scared to play charizard because it had such a big time right. yeah and it well, just absolutely. loses loses to let loose you know? Yeah. Well, it matters what version, but greens. yeah. Yeah, greens. greens. So like, I actually played greens, knowing that people were gonna play let loose, and I still made like day two and stuff yeah. with it. I played acrobikes for that exact reason, and I actually think the deck is like f I played three acrobike and four poke gear. Okay. I think the deck can actually deal with let loose better than people give it credit for, but uh, I did win my match against Rajasar Greens and my <laughs> top four match and my other baby blondes match all by just using let loose. So um, there's a, there's some, you know. Yeah. Do you know, I see what you're saying. <laughs> do you know if your opponent was playing the uh, the the acrobikes, the similar version as yourself? I believe he was. Okay. I can't remember off the top of my head now. I know the baby blondes are playing acrobikes, but I believe he was. Yeah, but there, yeah. yeah he, I feel like for baby blondes, there's a lot more moving parts. You know, trying to get the energy yeah. back in your hands. So f running yeah. into those acrobikes or something that you need after a let loose is just that's just devastating. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. I think Pigaron was the best like let loose deck. Like she oh, let yeah. loose someone oh, was yeah. just like, <laughs> for sure. uh, and then it was just to huge damage. To nothing. Chain, to yeah. Or Volter, turn one is broken. Yeah. Okay. Did Dan <laughs> was, I just okay, did Dene, uh, or get electromagnetic radar. Okay, cool. Yeah. You're off. Yeah. Like I think like the decks so much worse without let loose in my opinion uh oh yeah i mean i've been testing a little bit with like judge and judge whistle in the in the world format um i don't have a lot to say on it yet but it's uh it's definitely not the same <laughs> going let loose into lily for eight. Yeah. <laughs> right that's funny so you end you end 801 mm -hmm. what so how many do you have to win in day two to guarantee top so, eight i went 11 2 2 it was okay. a it would have been a clean cut if Diego hadn't tied his winning in at 33 yeah. points. So 35 was guaranteed. So I went, I think I went 3-2-1. Yeah, I went 3-2-1 day two. I did my last round for top eight, a top four opponent, Nathaniel. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. Nice. That's what's up. And like when, when you look at the top eight, do you like, what was it? The two, there's a baby blondes, there was two Picaron. Yeah, well, there's me and Diego, which were sort of different versions of Picaron, but yeah. Okay. And then there was Bloom. A, the Zorark, obviously. Zorark, well. Bloom Zorark, and then uh, Stunfist. Yeah, yeah, the Stunfist. Oh, Stunfist. <laughs> Stunfist. <laughs> that shit was nuts. Uh, Magnus playing Zapdos. Magnus. Oh, we and gotta talk. I want. Do you want to talk about and that? And now I'm, now I'm lost. <laughs> Do you want to talk about Magnus? Do you uh, want to bring that yeah. all up? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Because uh, like they just, uh, I know, I know we're just, we're switching it up right here. Sure. But I got the so, the name came up. I and... played Magnus day one or not day okay. one, day two, uh, uh, round one because we both went eight oh one actually. Um, okay. And were, were you I, there when mm -hmm. 
the, was it because like in his post he said the judge the head judge came over to him at day one like you played him round one was uh, that yeah. were you in that interaction at all? Um, okay. but i did have an interaction with judges yeah. uh so every single time I shuffled there's a judge behind him okay and not not for me yeah, um, yeah, yeah. i make that clear like like yeah. every single like what it wasn't i can't remember it's always the same judge or a different judge but there's always a judge behind him when he shuffled Fold. And, and one time shuffling and he didn't change the bottom card of his deck and then he got a dpp for it adult okay. prize loss damn um oh. and he you know appealed to the head judge and i said like there wasn't someone standing behind me the whole time like i could have forgotten to change the bottom card of my deck Sweet. like i cut his deck you guys saw on stream i cut my opponent's deck like three to five times almost every right, time right. Yeah. they shuffle or i shuffle their deck like um i didn't believe magnus you know he was he was Did anything super, for you i know you. this is like a super cliche thing to say um but it you know he could not have been a more you know welcoming opponent for someone okay. who hasn't been on that stage many times um and you know i was also sitting a few tables down from the whole hunter hunter magnus situation um i believe i was getting bodied by diego that round <laughs> uh, i remember right so i didn't have much to pay attention to Just besides watch that. that um so i remember there was a lot of loud talking i do remember the judge here telling like hunter you're holding up the tournament um so i can confirm that part of his story is true but I can also remember hearing a judge saying, like, you didn't mention that before and saying that to Hunter. So I don't... Those are the only two interactions I really heard. Um, like, my my official PR on it is I don't believe Magnus uh, cheated on his stream rounds. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, that's, <laughs> well, that's did just... You, did you read fair, the post where they, they talked about... They brought in a magician. And, and the right, magician... <laughs> Confirm <laughs> that he just got lucky. He, he did lucky. not stack. He He's did not like, stack yeah. his deck. Per the, magi the magician. Well, I. So just to be clear, I don't know anything about the magician <laughs> part. I cannot confirm or deny anything involving a magician. But I can say I believe that people that it was a coincidence. I believe he sufficiently randomized his deck. Okay. If if the judges had believed there had been. A penalty that should be should have been assigned for it um they, they would have assigned it you know um i personally have no evidence for this theory at all but i believe the reason um he, magnus got a double prize penalty playing me was some sort of like just be careful with your shuffling more in the future since they didn't catch that on stream um 100 yeah. because they had someone standing be i like it it you know you didn't have yeah. to be paying close attention to know that it was it was biased right, but yeah you yeah know? Like, I, I, I mean, not, I not that the judges were like biased towards magnus or that they intentionally wanted to give him penalties because it obviously wasn't happening the entire day but during my rounds every time he shuffled it happened and then after the penalty there wasn't someone there every time he shuffled hmm. so like i don't i don't have any other like observations okay. from that i guess but it was like also very and like Magnus did not shuffle, like he he and I were talk talking, making eye contact almost the whole time. I always you know cut and shuffled his deck. So I personally um, also believe that it's very easy to rewind a game state off of Cynthia and Stellar Wish. Um, and if there had been an issue there, the judges would have caught it. The same thing happened to me round fourteen on my win and in, where my opponent thought I had attached that turn and I was able to easily recount the five cards he gave me off let loose because, you know, four right. plus draw. I was like, I'll well these two, I attached this and I played Lily. Um like I you should be able to recount six cards. If you can't recount six or seven cards You shouldn't you know, be uh, <laughs> yeah, you should, you shouldn't be playing at that level. So yeah. but like this is sort of an awkward situation for me because both Magnus and Hunter are friends of mine. And so, like, I really don't, you know, if either of them watch this, I just want to say, like, you know, I love and support you both. <laughs> and it's not, you know, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not taking sides. I don't really. I personally, from what my experiences with him and seeing this round seven match, I don't believe Magnus cheated. Okay. But that's all I have to say. That's all you can go off of, you know, it, it, your opinion based on your experiences with him, you know. Yeah. And 
it, it seems like uh, the judges were a little bit biased if they're having somebody stand behind him watching him shuffle. You know, of course they're going to catch something. Like, they're, yeah, they're, exactly. Looking, well, they're I, looking I for something. something. I'm, sure, I'm sure I would have forgotten to change right. the block part of my deck That's once what, in the, you know, 18 rounds I played at the event. Easily. Like, I think what happened was, like, the whole thing on stream happened. The video blew up on Hey Font. Yep. They went in the next morning and had this, this big judge meeting, and it was like, with hey, with a magician, with a magician, with the the magician. magician. magician was there. <laughs> they, they called, they called in David Blade. They put in the video, they're like, all right, he was lucky here, but <laughs> we need to watch him the rest of the just tournament. In case. So just like in case. that round one, they were just on top of him. Oh them. my gosh. And yeah, but like I didn't. I, I sat next to right. him round. What, what was it, like, 13? Yeah, so I, I was, again, getting bodied by Malamar. Um, and, like, I... There wasn't someone behind him every time he shuffled there, either. So, it definitely seemed like it was something with round one, and then they caught him, and like, actually right, ended up winning game two because of that. Um, but it definitely seemed like a... Like, wait until something happens kind right, of thing. Right. I don't know. The judges... At NAIC, I believe, did a really good job. I never had any issues with them. The head judge was very courteous to me and my opponents. Um, very willing to listen to what I had to say because I actually protested my opponent's penalties multiple times. Um, <laughs> and, like, in, in in top four, I actually said to, my, to the judge, are you sure that you didn't just see multiple copies of the same card? You know, because yeah. that's also something that can happen, so... I did my best to to try and sort of get a sense of this. I also learned you can't deny these penalties. Oh. Um, double okay. prize loss penalties for insufficient randomization. So you, uh, um, yeah. that's also just important to know yeah. about. That's cool. Yeah, I think the whole cheating thing is wild. Like, you only get, you only see what you see online. And yep. then you get a hey font post, which, like, personally, I'd love people when they have issues to come on the podcast because yeah. when when you're writing something like it your your content is just not the same as when you talk like right, right, when right. someone listens to what you're saying they could they'll be able to feel your emotion like yeah. oh i have this interaction with exactly these people. Like, yeah and like when i read hunter's thing i'm like that fool hates that fool <laughs> yeah he hates that. <laughs> but he might not he might not a little bit where it's like so i both my parents are english majors um and so if I want to write something that's like a thorough dissection of someone's player's, uh, you know, play or, you know, a, a movie review for my English class, you know, like I'm, I'm a very, or not a very, but I at least think of myself as a pretty eloquent writer. Um, and so for me, like, it's a lot harder to see people like Hunter or Magnus's posts and really get anything out of it right. because what... like, like it is just he said you know he, yep, he said right. he said you know it's one yeah, one player's like against the other and if there is really an issue the judges would deal with it but there yeah. there isn't right so I mean, you can't you can't really i mean you can't rewind the time you know like and, just, uh, up and down like, yeah so, I, so I get it it's just like it sucks uh, like the whole situation happened and there's a lot of distrust um but it also is 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 what it is. There have been no penalties assessed, and until there are, I'm not. You know, I can't believe anything yeah, happened. Innocent, I innocent think... until proven guilty. Right. Exactly. You know, if if they're not handing out penalties, you know, of course somebody's going to be upset, especially if something doesn't go the way they want, or if they saw something they thought that was cheating or whatever. But you have a team of people looking at them, and like I know a, exactly. a lot of people are you know, uh, critical on the, um, the staff or the, the judging staff because their, their yeah. compensation, but at NAIC, I feel like it's a, a little bit higher level of, um, of quality judges. So even... exactly. Yeah. You have to apply to be a judge at NAIC. It's not like they're getting, getting, Free you know, product. getting Jim from down the street who has barely <laughs> yeah. passed his exam, you know, like it's, it's, I, I honestly believe the judges did a really good job at NAIC. Anytime I had an issue or I needed a pen to sign my match slip, like, they were all super courteous to me. They all, like, really, 
uh, made an effort to like hear out each player and like their case when there were penalties. Like they, I thoroughly believe that if there had been an issue, they would have they would have dived into right. it more. Um, yeah. Because yeah. I just I I have especially with the head judge there who I interacted with many times this weekend. Um, you know, like like I I have such little doubt in my mind that he would say you're holding up the tournament we need to move on without believing that there wasn't sufficient evidence to right. have a penalty right. okay yeah and like even when i watch that video where he moves the beast beast energy uh like he moves it that don't get me wrong it looks it looks horrible it looks horrible it looks like you're cheating but he does shuffle he shuffles exactly. he, i he believe shuffles. he shuffles sufficiently yeah i do too i we watch it i think he does I'll tell you, like, if he does not top deck, if they cut, if he cuts one card more and he doesn't top deck that that energy, like, we're not. This conversation isn't happening. Or if he taps, that's yeah. the biggest yeah. thing. If, yeah. he taps, if he taps, deck, this conversation like, is just not that, happening. Yeah, right. And like, so, like, the fact that he got cut into an energy is the only thing. Like, in other like, situations, sometimes you see people put their deck down in a weird way. Like yeah. they'll put it down, and like half the cards will be in mm-hmm. a different position so can, and try and aim for a cut, you know. Or sometimes, yeah. like in a bigger deck that'll happen. But Magnus, you have to remember, had like two hours in, yeah, he had, in deck he had two to win. Hours, yeah. Like he had electro power or he had Nihil Ego. He, he needed two two electro powers. Yeah. yeah. But my point is just yeah. that he had multiple outs to win the game. Yeah. And so saying like he was only shooting for one is a little yeah. like fallacious, I think. And like, like when sometimes you, when you... people don't like to see the more like famous player win you know because yeah, they're the overdog right, like right. i think that's why so many people were did for right. me in the final it was just because i they didn't know me you know yeah. and so it's like that's that's a big thing to remember too and sometimes yeah. good players get lucky sometimes bad players get lucky and it all just evens out that's that's uh, the randomization like, uh, of pokemon man that's yeah oh yeah, yeah the great the great, equalizer. <laughs> the great so, equalizer. Like, i love it i love it yeah like the argument I always hear is like he he's a good player. The guy's cuts, and he knew where that guy cut every time, and that's what he went for. And I'm like, that like that's such a bold you're reaching, statement. You're reaching, such right a bold there. statement. You're reaching. You're reaching yeah. A lot of assumptions, and you're also super belittling the other player. Right. Yes, yeah, <laughs> you are. Like I know, I know his opponent too. Like we're friends on Facebook. We played in St. Louis. He bodied me. Like I um. Like, uh, I know Noah, and Noah is not someone who's, like, who's, like, always going, like, yeah, I'm um, going to cut middle, you exactly 50% of your time. day. And the people who say that have not watched. They aren't even doing what right. they're accusing Magnus of doing. Right. You know, like, there's no way the people who say that actually go back and watch every single cut no, that happened no, in that no. match and be like, yeah, that looked pretty similar to me. Yeah, but that's, every time. that's the internet, you know. I'm, I, I yeah. see yeah. this. I want to say this. I want to be on this witch hunt. And, you know, let's all, let's all fucking grab our pitchforks and go for right. it. Yeah. Like, like, when I when I first seen the video, we were at dinner. And, like, like all, all I got was the clip of I moved the beast energy. And... Like, yeah, fucking cheater. He's just a cheater. And, like, <laughs> yeah. just a cheater. I'm like, like, if you just on clip, you're like, oh, he's cheating. Like, why? He needs a beast energy, moves the beast energy for no reason. All right, cheater. But, like, you, you can't do that. You go back, you watch it, and you go, I go back, I watch it. I'm like, oh, he shuffled, and, he, and the guy cut. And, like, if he cuts one more card, like, yeah, or, or dabs. Like you're not even talking. Even still, like, how many times have you looked through your deck? You're knowing, you're looking for your outs. Like, okay, what are my outs? What are my outs? Yeah. And you target them, right? Like, you don't necessarily pull them to the front or whatever, but you you make them visible to yourself, you know. And you're if you're on yeah. camera, like that's going to be seen by by the camera, you know. So it's like, yeah, sure. Like maybe he found the beast energy. He's like, okay, it's in there. Then shuffle it up, something yeah. like that. So right. it, it's. I don't know. It's hard. It's, all, to, say. it's, it's hard all. to say. There's Water. a lot of factors that go into it, um, and ultimately, everyone has the freedom to make their own decisions and their own judgments. But, like, I just think you gotta take a lot of look at, looks at it. You gotta take into the account the fact that both players are super smart to be at the point that they're at in round seven, where they're both like six oh one, I think, or maybe seven oh. Um, and like it's. It's really hard to make the assumption that 
anyone cheats without being aware that the other person had no idea of it. Right. Right. <laughs> and, so- yeah. You're su- you, yeah. I see that. Because we were, we were talking about, we were in the hotel room, and we were talking about, like, what you should do when you cut decks. And, like, mm-hmm. I always cut my, when I cut decks, I cut, like, crazy like i'll cut one card i'll cut for all the cards and like one right. like i change it every time and like i think and then they're like well one guy was like you should shuffle and then like someone brought up a good point like you probably shouldn't shuffle your opponent's decks because they do get last cut and they do touch the deck last yeah. as much as like oh you take they shuffle then you shuffle like that sounds great but at the end of the day if you really it could be a shitty person like giving them the last touch of the deck is just not a great idea, and I was like, yeah, I think that's right. And like, like I was sitting in the room with like Roel and and Ke- or Kenny, uh, Sam Chen, fucking Sam Chen was in there. We we're all talking about it, and like at the end of the day, you just cut your decks. Don't cut yeah, the same place. Yeah, innocent proven guilty. Assume yeah. your opponents are playing clean until you have a, a yeah. real reason not yeah. to. And like. There's just there's so much way so many ways to avoid these these stupid things and um, the internet's just gonna the eat it is, up. Either of them were trying to avoid it. What? <laughs> like it's not, you know, like, you like didn't feel like on it. stream. I didn't shuffle Stefan's deck because I'm like, if he stacks, then he'll get caught later. Right. You know, like that was my whole philosophy. Where I'm like, I'm gonna triple cut, but if I lose because of something that's not me, then right, so right, be right. it. You know, because because yeah, you know, streams a little different. I agree. It's not well, and but all his mistakes that people you know yeah. want to get all gutsy over were on stream. Yeah. You know. All so, of them. Yeah. It's when you're like, under a microscope. When you're under a microscope, being on camera, you know, it's like yeah. of course you're gonna point out anything you can, and it's like yeah. it, no. people are too concerned with how with how those with how those players are playing when they should be focusing yeah. on their own play. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so let's let's jump off of that. Let's let's go back to your run. We, so you get to the finals, you get a whole day to prepare, basically, right? How, yeah. When you look at that matchup, because me and Kevin we were talking about that matchup, we watched it earlier today, and we were talking like, what what do you think your percentages of winning is is on that? I'd say I, so. Like the finals match, I played like okay. So game two. Uh, <laughs> In my hand, I had Choice Band, Electro Power, Thunder Mountain when I promoted Picarom. So if I top decked energy, in You're theory, in I could have gone Tag Bolt next turn, and maybe he would have missed an attack. Yeah. Or maybe I would have been able to hit something else. So yeah. I was like, I 13 outs to energy in deck, maybe. I, I haven't counted my prizes, but, yeah. but I had outs. So that kind of sucks. Yeah. But. Um, Game one, I definitely got a little too antsy with my energy switches and everything, going for Tingler turn. Um, I also didn't really know his list. I didn't know how many Acerola he played. Um, so I was like, maybe it's it's safe to go for it here. Um, but overall, I think the matchup um, with safer play and more thoughtful play and more equal draws, um, you take Glut Loose out of the equation, I would say it's probably about I, I want to say it's 55 4. I hadn't tested against the deck at all. I didn't play any games the night before. Okay. I just wanted to chill out and, like, you know, and, like, try to. Like, I'm sleep. just happy I'm here. I'm yeah, just, so. Exactly. That's uh, literally what I said. Happy to be here. I'm so happy to have the opportunity. I'm so happy to get to play Stefan on such a big stage and get my name out there. Um, was this your and, first top, top eight, like, ever? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I, well, okay. so I had my first Masters top eight. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Because, like, I, I have this feeling, because I, I top eight it in, in Portland, and, like, one, once I made top eight, I was like, oh, I am, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm still playing. <laughs> and, then, and then, like, I won my top eight, and then, like, in my head, I'm like, oh, yeah, I did it. Like, I won. Like, I, in my head, I won. Like, I won. Right. And then they're like, oh, yeah, you, you, you keep playing. And then, I, then, like, I was like, I just feel like I'm happy to be here. Right, you know? yeah. And so I kind of get what you're saying. I sort of felt that way after day one because I didn't need anything from this right, tournament right. you know like sure. I didn't go into it thinking I was going to get second like my mindset for regionals more recently has just been like just go play Pokemon like have fun with your friends you know and just try and make them 
And, you know, Madison went well with that philosophy. NAIC went well with that philosophy. It's going to, what I'm going to try and take into Worlds. And, um, you know, it's just so, so wrapped down in Pokemon and, and Facebook and, you know, social cloud. The poke, and the poke all poke these things. Drama. And I think it really, oh, yeah, and I think it really takes away from the experience, you know? Yeah, I agree. Uh, so it's yeah. worth, like, when, and I was also just sitting there. And I was on the stage during round four after winning top eight. And I was like, wow, this is real life, you know, right. like, like this is, this is action, you know, and if I don't take the opportunity to be in the moment, then I'm going to re regret it, you right. know? So, so I'm so, so happy to be where, where I was and, um, you know, and it's really a good benchmark of where I'm at as a player too, you know, I right. mean before everyone can kind of say by their own evaluation like yeah i think i'm a pretty like good player i'm a pretty above average player like i have i had a top 16 at what is still the largest regionals of all time um oh, cool. at st louis yeah, last yeah. year i had you know day two at madison which was eh, you it's know, still madison madison's always a big right. tournament yeah too. The, I, I, feel, I feel like um, a lot of the top players always go to always madison good. so yeah day two in there um was but it was like a feat you know, I didn't have any benchmark beyond like the top player in Minnesota, which is like I'm the only player in Minnesota who got to play this year. So I'm like, I know I can't, I can't, you know, flex with that at all. Um, but this, I could look like I, I played three world champions day two. I played, played against another top eight worlds player. You know, I played a lot of super skilled, super talented players. And I, I played them evenly, you know, like yeah. I, I, I made them think, you know, I pushed them, I did my best. And so, so to me, that's a really good benchmark as a player. Right. It's like you, you finally look at something and go, you know what, I can compete with both. Exactly. And um, like, I knew I was good. Like you, in your head, you know, like you put in the time, you just just not seeing the results. And then once you yeah. start playing these and you're winning, you're like, I knew it. I, I fucking knew it. I knew yeah, it. I yeah, exactly. I'm like, I'm like, okay, now damn it. I can point to this. Yes. Like, maybe I'm good. Now, I can, you know now everyone else knows. It. All right. I don't know. Yeah. Well, according to the NAIC standings, you are the second play, second best player in all of the uh, all of the uh, Pokemon world, like the, right? I, I had. A, I'd like to say NAIC is a harder tournament than Worlds, easily. I would think there's more p players and all the good players are are there too. It's not like people are missing I would it. Disagree. Yeah, but, really. Yeah, well, you don't have you really? don't have like pretty much all of Japan like any Japanese players coming in. Like you have you have uh, different factors like that. There's, there's not even really like the biggest part of it to me. Like so, get, let me give you a sense. So round one, I played against Oranguru, Salazzle, Unknown Hand. <laughs> okay. Round two, I played against Lost March. Round three, I played against the Mirror, but he played Red Challenge. Round four, I played against Weezing. Round five, I played against Reshiram Kiawe, who bricked. Uh, I think it was round six that I played against Greens, Resh Reshizard. Round seven, I played against, like, Drachi Pikaram. Round eight, I played against... Uh, I can't remember. But my point is just that you look at my first first like, few rounds... Six and round, we're not first playing. six rounds, you're not playing a single, a single meta deck. Yeah. Oh, no, I played Tool Drop round six oh. <laughs> that was really well played, i played around well, well. five maybe I, so it was like you know uh, i see what you're saying but <laughs> but on the other spec of like, like sometimes those decks fuck you up like oh yeah sometimes oh, like, sure. That's like Rob is so good it just doesn't yeah, lose yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah like sometimes like when like going into worlds you're like uh you're not expect you're expecting good decks you know yeah but like when you go into a big tournament like this you like the first three rounds you could fucking just get beat by some you dumb play, stuff you That's could play hollow like, blaziken and lose to uh to lose to rotoms yeah That's, That's right like, yeah no, i ha i don't want to we don't we bring that up too much right rotom deck with bullshit and like no one should play that like my deck was so good going to that tournament and well, i had Dallas? to hit some shit Dallas, right? like, oh my gosh oh yeah. my gosh that was great no we played like the whole meta was straight Zorark. I'm like, I can't lose the Zorark. We played, we, played Ho -Oh, Ho -Oh, and... we played the sixty card mirror of Ho -Oh Blaziken, and he runs in, he runs into uh, uh, Rotom, Rotom. Rotom. So it, which just has weakness to everything on my deck. Yeah. So and then 
the next round I face fucking Wasp, or Night March. Um, Night, March I, yeah. Night March. That Joltex just kill my oh. things. I'm like, my tournament's over. All right. But like that that's my argument. Like when I when I like I get I get it. The player the level of players you're gonna play at worlds are a lot better. Like I would I would counter that statement just by saying like I outplayed like those decks. You yeah, know? I agree. Like like Lost March, you know, like Rangru and Lost March both have bad matchups to peek around, but they you know, if you're not an experienced player, you're not going to beat those decks. Like, the only reason I believe that I tied Weezing, which is normally like a, I would go as far as to say like a 35 65 for Picaram because I didn't play Hood or anything, is because I won game two with like five minutes left. But again, okay. like that, that to me was like, yeah. you know, I played pretty well in that match, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, you're going to play against weird decks. Like, that's true at Worlds, too. You're going to play against rogue mm -hmm. decks. Like, like last year at Worlds, a few tables down from me, they're playing Zoroark, Sylveon GX, Bag Cargo. And, like, you know, so there's going to be yeah. wacky decks at Worlds, especially with rotation happening. There's going to be... Yeah, we're, that's but, weird, yeah. But the hardest just thing is just that, like, the odds of you winning free matches because people aren't playing good enough decks is like really low. Yeah, you know? everyone there is like competent. Like my first round at NAIC, I faced like a poker dad that was just there to exactly. be there. Yeah, you're right. I guess you're right. When you say it like that, you're right. Because every match is going to be that that person earned the points. They like, you should it's like saying that like day two is easier than day one because day two has less rounds. Yeah, like, where it's yeah. like, it's like, I mean, yeah, it does have less rounds, but I played against three world champions and a world sure. top eight, and but, um, you know, a sponsored yeah. ARG player all in one day, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you're right, because even even at like NAIC, uh, someone brought up uh, Stefan's like match history, and like they're like, they looked at it, they're like, he played two people. Two people that anyone's ever heard of, and he lost to one of them in 19 rounds. Uh, like, that's why he wins. That's why he wins. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I would agree too that I'm before this tournament, I was more or less a nobody. I actually yeah. have been called a nobody on Twitter Damn. by players. Damn. Wow. The disrespect. Um, but you know, it's it's. Um, was that a top player that said that to you? Yes, but I'm gonna, not are, going to name. Can I do it? It's not important. Are you sure? <laughs> well, you proved him fucking it. wrong. God, uh, whoever yeah. the point was. is, now I can point him and say, "Here's looking at you, bud." Fucking I think I, I believe I've got it, and I, I see finalists before he does. Nice, there so. you go, there you go. <laughs> oh, so play. Arguing, I like Hell it. yeah! And you know who you are. Uh, <laughs> watch yourself. If you're watching, if you're watching, <laughs> you, that's actually a really big issue, it. though. Like being called, like. I sort of became friends with, like, top players and seniors through, like, Snapchat and, like, other teenage, like, hey, we're just the same age and, like, we're yeah. funny. But, like, for me, like, finding, like, I know a lot of sort of top players, but, like, I've always, I've never really felt like they, like, <laughs> cared about me that much, them... which is, like, reasonable because I wouldn't care about me either as, like, a nobody, but also, like, it's really hard to, like, make friends with people who are really good because sometimes you just... It feels a little elitist, I guess. Yeah. No, it, but I, I think like I, no, when I we, think you're when right. we I got, I've gotten that podcast. feeling. I've gotten that feeling before. Yeah, really? yeah. Before before we started doing all this and we were actually, you know, involved more in the Pokemon. Yeah. Like when we first had just started the channel, like I definitely got that elitist vibe. But you know, a, as you get more comfortable, like right. they're just people, you know. And, and a lot of times, I think that's the biggest thing. I think it's more in my own head than it is by their like their you know personalities. Right. But, but for me, it's just like. I also have like pretty bad like social anxiety and stuff like that and so like it's it's really hard for me to like make friends right. super easily um and not, so, now, like, now you're gonna have to. people coming up to you all the time oh dude you yeah. got second I do. Yeah. I do i i went from having like 10 facebook friend requests to like 130 <laughs> went from having 100 and 20 Twitter followers to I hit 500 today. There you go. Uh, there you go. Well, like, the growth is insane. Like, <laughs> like the publicity like, is insane. You'll, get, you'll get the respect. Two and... secret videos to uh, this will be my fourth podcast, and I have three more in <laughs> the next three days. All right. So. All right. Well, let's see. Yeah, it's pretty insane. And like the fame. Uh, the fame like, comes with the results. 
I like totally. it though. I love. Yeah, I love it. No, too. That's good. It's not. <laughs> and I think like you're also young. Like you're 17, oh. and a lot of these top players are over 21. And like yeah. tournaments, when like we all go yeah. hang out at a bar or something, right. it's like yeah. Yeah. that's when like the real like friendship right. starts. And like, yeah, right. It's it's tough, but when you're now like it's gonna be. Fuck, everyone's gonna you're gonna be fine I think fine. I'll be okay you'll be yeah. fine be great. Like, like everyone's gonna now, respect now you, got a tar- you now, you got, now you got a target on your back Emery <laughs> which is good part like, of it too is I don't think I've given enough players a fair enough chance to like interact with me or given myself a fair enough chance to get to know them and so just because like they didn't respond when I like asked you know asked a question or just because like you know someone called me a nobody on Twitter like he wasn't wrong like, yeah, he is, like, like to give he's, him credit, he's wrong. Like, like he, you shouldn't say that shit. I don't care what, like, who you are. No, like I get it. Like for me, it's it's sometimes hard when your time gets super constricted, to one, you right. know, or to be friendly to everyone. Like, and it's impossible to ask people to be like, "Hey, just because you're good at this game also means that you have to be a socially like adept person." Because I know a lot of people are just as scared as I am of talking to others, you know, and like interacting with others. So. Like, yeah. I wouldn't say it's a really big problem, but I would also say, like, when, you know, like, being called a nobody on Twitter was not, like, a good luck at yeah. it. Like, stuff stuff but, like that should really never happen. <laughs> yeah. I bet, like, whoever it was, I bet you if they look back at it, they wouldn't. They regret saying something like that. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> I think I probably read into it a little bit too much, too, um, but it was... It was it was definitely like a frustrating moment for me as like a player and it definitely like soured my taste towards like the whole the whole like cliche of the upper tier, I guess yeah. yeah well like you have uh you have used that as fuel for your fire right? oh, and you yeah. have overcome oh, yeah. like you it. have overcome so <laughs> and we like, are proud we are proud of, of day, you for that like, yeah hell yeah <laughs> basket <laughs> basket <laughs> Emery. Uh, oh yeah and I think like at the end of the the day it's you're you're a fucking pokemon player like shut shut the fuck up like to call someone a nobody get the fuck here yeah dude like all right if circle yeah right we're all fine it's like ten thousand of us like i gotta call me a nobody (laughs) exactly oh man all right someone like fucking elitist like lebron james exactly Dear nobody. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Chan calls me a nobody. Twitter followers. You can't yeah. call me nobody. Right. How about that? Right. Uh, there we go. I like that. That's a new rule. We're right that oh, now. Man. Million Twitter followers. And so if so. you have a million Twitter followers and call me a nobody, then that's fair enough. Uh, if you play Pokemon and you got a million Twitter followers, all right. You can <laughs> right. You as soon as Puka hits a million Twitter followers, we can call go. people nobodies. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Oh man! All right, well let's switch it up. Let's switch it up. Sure, uh, sure. So we were talking about worlds. Let's kind of get a little bit uh, more on your thoughts for worlds format. All this rotation going on. Um, what your ideas are going to be for strategy versus uh, overall overall player ability. So like, do you think right. do you think the deck building capability is going to supersede? the overall player's ability or do you think um you know somebody's gonna try and find the best deck and break the format within you know the next month so like my big thing is like post rotation formats suck right like they're there's dull, so few dull, cards to do dull. with there's so few options. like no one knows how it's gonna work i hate blind tournaments even though like it's all i play in because midwestern regionals are always the biggest so they always try and like put sets like right in front of of like madison like um denver like right. denver like uh collinsville so that's cool. like really frustrating um but it's also um it also means deck building is going to be the biggest feature i mean and that's what i'm most afraid of because i'm not a very good deck builder like you can see from my naic list like it's pretty cucky cutter. It was pretty similar to what Rahul played in Madison. Like, like it, it was not the spiciest no, card I played was like Raikou, right. you know, right. which right. is like kind of uh, you know, like looking back on it, that might even DDG played right. Raikou. Yeah. yeah. So like, oh, you're on the right page, I guess. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so that's like kind of kind of scary to me, but I also um, I also know that like, I mean, I have a really good group of friends and a really that's good all. group. of players who who i'm able to like talk with and test with so i'm really hoping that you know 
by our powers combined. Uh, <laughs> it's all gonna that's, what, that, that, that's what I was going to fall back to. I'm like, you got to have a testing group. When you get a testing group, oh, you, see, you I bounce actually names. <laughs> well, you got uh, friends. I have Minnesota friends and stuff. Yeah. But, like, I think only three of us got our invite this year, if uh, I that's, remember right. That's not and, bad. Like, it, but so. still. And so I have a testing group, but even we don't really test that often. Like, I don't test that often. Yeah. Um, and that's, like, a bad look. But I also, <laughs> you know, I take five AP classes. And, oh, like, I, I wake up most days during the school year at, like, geez. 3 or 4 a.m. Um, and, like, I, you know, I also have three extracurriculars. And I have Pokemon. Like, time to test is <laughs> super tough. Oh, yeah. So, um... Like, I'm, like, obviously, now that I have summer, I have a lot more time since I'm only really, like, working at Cub. Um, sponsoring Cub, by the way. What's, uh, what's, <laughs> but, what's Cub? It's a grocery store. Okay. In, that we have okay. In, here in, here. <laughs> it's, it's a grocery store. Dude, Cub. If, if someone doesn't sponsor me after I accidentally plug them on the official stream, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> Shut <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, that's fine, fucking but, great. Uh, that's fucking great. Curse it. Yeah. Oh man. Maybe next time. Eat fresh, everyone. Oh man. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I like your idea on what you think the world's format's going to be. I'm super excited about this rotation. Um, I, I get what you're saying about how it, how it can be um, kind of stale because there's no there's nothing solidified, but it also means that. You know, everything is going to be on that player's ability to not only deck build, but but pilot that deck through the best of the best. So, and, and plus, I, I don't know if you've checked out the the new set. I like a lot of the new cards in this set. Um, there's certain things. Yeah, they're they're all pretty cool. So, yeah. Some of them are pretty good, but yeah, they're all yeah, pretty cool. I mean, you look at <laughs> things I like think, like the hardest thing I I look when I'm looking at the new set. Uh, the hardest thing I look at is like how slow is it? Is it slow enough where I can play a stage two? Or is Pikaram just too I mean, fast? Pikaram's just too fast. Every deck is too fast. Yeah. You got Flare Starter, yeah. you got Welder, you have that new stadium yeah. that makes Welder really good. Yeah, I you think have, like, a lot of people Pikram, are... Which literally goes Judge, Did they Change, right? Pokemon Communication, Coco Prism. Next uh, turn, I'm going to hit you for, you know, tag. I'm going to tag switch and knock you out next turn if you don't try and do I, something. The, like, yeah. The one thing turn. I've noticed is, like, everyone's sleeping on Charizard. They're like, oh, it's bad now. It's because Reset Whistle exists now. Yeah, I guess so. Or not yeah. reset. Or a research yeah, stamp. Yeah, yeah, reset. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reset stamp. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like Which you greens, yourself? fine. Reset hole. Or what? Oh reset stamp. Reset yeah. stamp. Yeah. Reset stamp. Yeah. Like like and it's okay. An, and it's like, an item. And, and it's an I'm item. Gonna... Like damn. Uh... Yeah. Like okay. Now I'm gonna. Now I'm gonna. Damn reset greens stamp, is tough. Or judge, and Cynthia, or you know, or data yeah. change, and it's like okay, bud, like. Like, and Picaram can fit custom catchers now, too, which is super yeah. scary. <laughs> yeah, this is... That yeah, should be a little while. I think, like, Fire just has so much. Like you said, they have Welder, they Fire have that stadium. Like, I also feel like it's going to need to change and adapt a lot. To yeah, still right. Be good. right. And, like, Welder could be put in anything, which is... I think the deck has to start just saying, like, like digging super hard for Turn 1 Welder. So, like, yeah. I think Jirachi and, like, Dedene, and then, like, just trying and you know playing four welder for a poker year and then like that new stadium that lets you like viridian for two right, fire yeah, basically yeah. so like that fun. that's it's so busted I, that's yeah. that card's broken but that, that, card's that should literally be your gameplay going into like every game because that in itself is better than saying greens flare right. starter you reset stamp me so i'm gonna try and draw out of it but, like, your odds of doing that are so low anyway. Right. <laughs> so, like, obviously people aren't going to be playing for Reset Stamp. But, but right. Reset right. Stamp reset, but reset stamp is going to be a staple in, in pretty much every, every deck. If people right. are going to play at least sure. one. You know, it's... Yeah. it's oh, uh, also Arcanine is so broken. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned that, but Arcanine is, like, still really, really good. Yeah. Agreed. It's, like, this is... Should be fun. Like, should be fun. Yeah, the, should I, be fun. I, that's what I'm saying. I'm excited for the world's format. Just because it kind of gives a fresh look. It gets... Gets the old, you know, you're getting rid of fucking uh, Let Loose. Zorark is great. I think I think, I think, think Zorark's great, but getting rid of Let Loose is 100% necessary. But, okay. you know, it, it, but at, you add reset stamps, so it doesn't change too much, but it lets you continue to play. You, you're going to, like, say you get reset stamp turn one. You're still back at six, not Very four. Yeah, I think, I think reset stamp might be an issue, um, but we'll have to see just people build their draw engines around it. Right. right. Yep. I agree. Yep. 
Because there's a, there's so many uh, there's something to look at. I think could... it would be better if Ranger was still in format, but the card seems a little like really good otherwise. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what do you play? Yeah. You play Salazzle? Uh, sh- oh, I personally I personally cool. think Salazzle's like the best engine. If you if you, like really look at it, like I, mean, I played it you this weekend. No. Oh uh, yeah. Are you, you sure? Did. Yeah, there's a 60 HP one. Is there? There's like four. Oh, diff- you're right. There is because I played against Unknown yeah. Hand, which had yeah. 60. Yeah, HP but is it is it the is it post? Um, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe it's rotating. Uh, that's that's the only concern that I would have. I think I have it right here, actually. That actually might be broken. Yeah, so I haven't honestly thought a lot about the new format, but yeah. my general thoughts are like, a deck has to be consistent. Like, like consistency should be that. Like, that sounds super, like blah. But like, you should not have any consistency issues going into this event, or else you're gonna right. do badly. And then also, you should be playing a deck that either a has healing, or b is a one prize deck that aff- that can afford to get knocked out. Because we have like no damage bots, so like it is gonna really determine or how quickly you knock is out. Max, is is really Max gonna potion rotating? That. Okay. It is. It was printed. Um, the, well, what about the land at 60 HPs and Dragon Majesty. So, okay, so yeah, you can be good. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, well, that's... Uh... Yeah. I think, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be fun, I think. It's going to be a spicy meatball. Spice, a spicy sure. meatball. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, so we'll kind of wrap it up. Uh, we just want to know a little bit about your plans for next season. Like, uh, So you're sure. going to be going into your senior year... Um, is is oh, yeah. something like professional Pokemon? You're still like, is that something you're still gonna try and look for? Are you gonna continue going as hard as you did this year? You know, you reached over a thousand points, right? So is that something that just under, just under just a thousand? Under, okay, yeah. okay. Oh, that's nine seventy eight. Okay, okay, all right. Well, you know, is that something that you're gonna try and achieve? Are you gonna go for top sixteen, or are you just gonna try and fly under the radar, get your world's invite, and handle your business? <laughs> Uh, that's a great question. So it, a lot of it depends on whether I get a stipend. Okay. Um, so if I get a stipend for the first IC, I wouldn't count top sixteen out of the out of the equation, or at least running for it. You know, um, I am a free agent right now, and so that makes it a little bit harder for me to justify going to like going for top sixteen because like I just if you're not getting any publicity for it, then it's kind of like what's the point? You know, yeah, no. I think everyone in top 16 this year besides maybe joe is sponsored yeah so been... it's like you know but <laughs> I, I mean at the end of the day we've talked about this a lot the sponsors are pretty fucking not really doing they're not much. they're not amazing but it also is like a like it's a definite benchmark of like success you know yeah. and like as a high school student being, obviously like my parents support me and everything but you know, any monetary advantage I can get is like a, a big deal right, for right. me. Have you, so, have you considered uh, uh, Have you considered coaching at all? Uh, I have considered it, but I just don't know. You know how how yeah, much thousand, people would actually or you got five hundred Twitter I'm, followers. Now, so like, I'm also not confident in myself enough as a player to offer okay. coaching. I need to, I, I, I need to get another top eight or another result, which really shows that I have have what it takes to be like. Well, a good when coach. you when you win when you um, win this world's worlds. Or this this year's this worlds, this year's worlds. Uh, I think you'll be uh, you'll be you'll be just good or just fine. If I top eight world, you, I'll put it into into a promise now. If I top eight worlds this year, I will offer coaching. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. Is that, is that, um, is that a thought that, process for you? Like, coaching? like say no, just like say you do start like doing really well. Is like full time Pokemon like the dream, or are you like I'm college bound? I'm gonna get a real job. So like. I wouldn't be taking like five AP classes and like right. grinding super hard if I wasn't <laughs> going for college. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. But I also think like players like Isaiah Williams, who goes to Stanford, to my knowledge, is yeah. is showing how you can still be a professional player and still do right. world events. I um I don't know is the short answer because again I don't think I, I don't think I'm like well enough established and like while you guys said sponsorships don't mean it is a you know, if I want to be a professional player, I need to have the publicity of a support system behind me, you know? Yeah. And so I would also need to upgrade from the 
laptop I'm using to record this. I would need to upgrade, you know, I would need to find a, a writing site which would be willing to read what I write. And I would also have to be content with the content that I'm putting out, yeah. which is like a whole another issue um, in Pokemon, I think, right now. But um, it's for me, like my goal next year, um, top eight or regional, okay. um, make at least 10 new friends. Okay. I like, I like that one. I like this one consistently test and finally just stay humble you know i mean no matter how much success i have whether it's super limited or or you know unbounded or you know i go for top 16 i really want to stay humble i really want to keep making friends and i really want to keep working hard um to establish myself as as someone in this community and as a play as a person in a lot of ways yeah. well you, and you you said this is only your second year in masters right yep yeah and I mean, my two two years in Dude, you're doing good. You're doing. You're on the right side. And and like you 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 look like you're having the most fun out there. You got the. What well, didn't you play it in a tournament with a onesie or something? <laughs> I did. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, you had the headband. The I was gonna wear the onesie, yeah. and then I realized that I wanted to win. <laughs> <laughs> you, think the, you think the onesie stops you? <sighs> it does. Uh, really? so I've actually done scientific analysis on the onesie. I need to it uh, causes you to overheat and get super dehydrated <laughs> oh, as you go damn, on. Oh damn! Okay, day. okay. And then there's also what I call the distraction factor, where every time you get up or walk or do anything or breathe, people stare at you. And that's a lot of mental pressure to deal with in a given day. So no onesie. And so uh, wearing the onesie actively makes you a worse player. Um, and so you should Fine. not play it. You should not wear it unless you actively are okay with going with your drop at a tournament. We, you got it here now. It's, oh it's my fine. God. In your purse. <laughs> Do not wear once. Do not oh wear one. Oh my gosh. Cool, the scientific, the scientific analysis winning. has been. <laughs> I feel like. I feel like I just got challenged. Like, oh I feel God. like I Please, just got I have an XXL onesie. Zach, Zach you, already sweat, I, you already sweat a lot as oh, it I, is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I feel like I got challenged. I think I have to wear a onesie at one of these next year. And I get on the top. And then I'm going to go over to Emory and be like, what science, bitch? Yeah, what? what science? <laughs> wear, it, wear it at Worlds I'm just, and play, I'm it, play it in, in the open. Sweat. <laughs> What? It's just, it's just you're, like, you're like bringing out the onesie from sweat. <laughs> okay. I'm, okay. I'm like, I made it though. I made it. Yeah. Uh, it's like uh, it's like those sweatsuits that like professional boxers wear. Like I, I do not joke. Like I literally, so I almost always have a headache when I play Pokemon to give you a sense because I'm chronically dehydrated and like super socially stressed about whatever's going on at a given moment. And uh, the onesie makes that a lot yeah, worse. Yeah, <laughs> like the onesie, like and you're that fucking overheating. Because, oh, jeez. Not only are you stressed about talking to people normally, but then you're wearing a giant Mikachu onesie, and so it really doesn't help at all. Um, actually, fun story about that. So uh, there's some regional where like Doug Picks came out, and like everyone on my friends list, my now smaller friends list, was like, "Thanks, Doug." for the pick friends with sydney at this point like i am now or doug specifically and i was like i gotta get one of these pictures man this has gotta happen and so the onesie came out i did bad at every tournament i wore it at but i got like many doug picks oh my god and so and then i became friends with sydney and i never needed to <laughs> good at tournaments so I never needed to wear the one that's again. good but oh my gosh well where the uh where, so you wear the choice band now right yeah. You wear that at every choice helmet at Worlds. Choice you're wearing the choice that's... helmet at Worlds? I'm grabbing a helmet and I'm putting the choice band on. That's that's the plan right now. But it. it might just be the choice All right. band. All I right. don't want to make anyone get too excited. <laughs> I, I think the choice band's dope. I don't think you should I believe I the choice just... band is dope. I think you go with the choice band, the helmet, like no look. I think <laughs> the band is worth that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's too much. The band is like Perfect. It's just enough, but I worry it won't be original worlds anymore. Nah, I know it also is going to wear a giant helmet. You might have a bunch of followers, though. You might have oh, a bunch of choice band people. Because everyone's going to know yeah, I'm the original. original. Yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. knows that. Yeah. So where'd that, where'd that come from? Like, you wanted to wear the choice band? <laughs> so that was just buy that? Me as a birthday gift. Um, when I am, I'm 17. Uh, I've been 17 for a month and a week okay. so far. Well, happy happy belated um, birthday. Thank you. I uh, it was from an Etsy shop. Okay. I have a link to the my Twitter at Roarchomp. Okay. Um, yeah, we have it down below. Down down below. Give it a uh, give it a little follow there. It's on on the page the Etsy shop. 
I believe it's called. I have no idea what it's right. called. But it's, it's his Etsy shop. He's he's. It's he's not my Etsy shop. It's not, not my Etsy shop. Like, I'm like, not advertising. Oh Unsponsored God. free agent, every oh tailor. Like I need. Um, besides I need... TC Evolutions, go buy TC Evolutions dice. They're the best dice in the game. So. Oh, the... <laughs> All right. Well, we're we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up a little bit. We've uh, taken up enough of your time, but we do do this one thing right now. Uh, we are doing a little giveaway for our guests. Uh, we want you to pick your top three world's contenders. It's all going to be a point-based system, and the the okay. lowest score wins. So if you ha- pick somebody who wins overall, you get one point. If you pick somebody who gets 100, the, you get 100 points. You want the lower number. Wait, so you want to pick the player who players who are going to do No, you want to pick the players who are going to no, do the best. Do yeah, that's oh, low that's score, easy. Lowest number. I see, yeah, I lowest see, number I see. So uh, yeah. it's all going to be for this little giveaway, like I said, we're doing. Uh, I don't know if you've watched the show at all, but do you know who Chumley is? I I okay. know of him. Well, we are going to be giving away <laughs> this beautiful portrait of our man Chumley. Yeah. There we It'll go. Be It'll be signed. Whoever has the lowest score will get this. Well, <laughs> and we're doing it. Oh, pick, yeah. pick, pick other players. but You can pick yourself. Um, you can pick, that's allowed. That's allowed. I see. think you'll be the first person to do that. I got to pick... This is a really big question. Um, I don't even know exactly who's going to World this year, but I'm going to pick Tord. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pick... Okay. Wait, is there, like, players who have already been picked? Is yeah. that an issue? No, no, no. You can pick whoever matter. you want. Okay. Yeah. Tord. If there's a tie, we'll figure it out. I don't think anybody's picked uh, Tord, to be honest. No. No one has. <laughs> I love Tord. I think if there's one player who I want to meet and, like, talk to more, it'd be Tord. Uh, Diego? Uh, Castoraga, he and I had a okay. really, really good match at NAIC, and I have a lot of respect he won for him. He uh, two years ago, correct? He did win two years ago. Yeah. And uh, I think he's dope, and uh, I really enjoyed talking to him. Um, should I pick a U.S. player? Let's see. Um, Do you think a U.S. player is going to win? Do you really want to win this portrait of Chum? No way. No way a U.S. player would win. <laughs> no Dude, way. No chance. Like all our all our US players always like 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 they always counterpick each other and then they all do Oh bad. my gosh, that's like all the European players and like all the international players together. just play with each other and then they all do better than us and I'm like not yeah. shocked. Yeah. You know? They're it's a like, better team. Um but anyway. A US player uh, I would say you know, we'll just pick myself all because right. you know, I don't I don't wanna yes. pick any of my friends. I don't wanna like I don't wanna uh, I like you it. know, I'll be the only guy who picks someone who's unsponsored. All right, there so. you go, there you go. <laughs> what? I think you're the only person who picked themselves too, which is. Let's go. Let's I like go. it. I like it. Yeah, I always, every time we have probably some fun. three unique picks, right? I doubt anyone else picked Diego either. Nope. No. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. Yeah. So your chances like are pretty good. Doing like, it for both, uh, doing uh, it for America. Who, Let's go. I, like no, I think somebody picked themselves. I'm looking at it right now. Oh yeah, it was Jesper. Oh, Jesper no picked, picked himself. No, oh, no, he, he changed, changed it. it. Oh, okay, yeah, he changed it. He changed it. Yeah, yeah. He changed it. He's like, nah, I don't, I don't trust myself. <laughs> yeah. I don't trust myself either. I think I'm gonna bomb, but I also don't yeah. know what I would do with a like life-size chum leaf. Dude, Jasper's trying to fight yeah. people. So, hey, so, hey, so, hey like, man, he's like, I can't pick myself. You gotta, you gotta hang it up in your room. Uh, I think it matches the color. Perfect. Of her, perfect. So I don't know about now. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. All right. So if you have any shout-outs or anything you wanna do. You- uh sure so shout out to um the minnesota gang everyone knows who they are uh shout out to all my friends who supported me at naic and and you know they the people who who make it worth playing shout out to my parents for being always so supportive so kind um and uh shout out to tc evolutions for their amazing dice ability markers and gx markers all right respect well thanks again for being on the show we really appreciate it congratulations again on your number two finish uh at naic and con- uh good luck to uh your world's competition all Thank right that's guys. that's all Thank the time you. we got for today so for now we're gonna scoop it up <laughs>